Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The extent of South Africa's electricity shortfall came to the fore again recently when ESCOM resorted to load shedding after a coal silo collapsed at Majuba. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss possible interventions designed to find short-term and longer-term solutions to the crisis. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Some National Planning Commission members recently met with energy industry players to talk about the power situation. What are some of the remedies being discussed? I think the key thing is to try and get people that are in the industry around the table with the authorities, whether that be in National Treasury or the Department of Energy. And the way uh, the National Planning Commissioners that, that had this discussion with the South African National Energy Association framed it was to try have some quiet conversations around issues that can be dealt with maybe in the short term to sort of alleviate some of the stresses. And those would be things like trying to get the demand side management program moving again. You know, when Eskom applied for uh, the 16% increases over the five years under the third multi-year price determination and they only received eight, one of the things that took strain is the uh, demand side management. And that's something of a pity because that was going quite well and we saw there was a lot of interesting interventions uh, being taken, whether it was in factories or in houses with lighting or you know, pump solutions, just uh, innovations that were reducing uh, power consumption. And uh, th those had saved Eskom quite a, quite a lot uh, over the last uh, few years during the tight period. But a lot of that is now not, not funded. There's not, no cash flow visibility and therefore they're not proceeding. So that would be a, maybe a looking at trying to find a financial structure to st restart that. And then, you know, we've got the um, Independent Power Producer Program. It's focused on the renewable energy side, but that is running, running into some connection problems. So maybe to have discussions around how can the, um, the transmission, the grid infrastructure be readied uh, or be beefed up during this period so to allow private participants in. And a range of other, you know, shorter term interventions and then looking more medium term at the role of something like gas and maybe getting the exploration going around uh, shale but also uh, whether we could have um, the liquefied natural gas coming in in the form of imports as a bridging type solution uh, in a fairly short term or medium term and then longer term maybe looking at the, the actual structure of the industry you've got we've got this vertically integrated uh, system with Eskom that uh, you know, that got us through for many years, but it really is that we're in a battle, battling now to keep the lights on. And there's a view that the private sector has to come in. The structure is such that uh, you know the, the playing field is not necessarily leveled between uh, the private sector or the RPPs and Eskom, because they they are the the generator. They also uh, own the transmission network. And you know, looking at the structure, do we have an, uh, an is a system um, market operator, the ISMO, or do we have some other structure? So those sort of conversations, so sort of short-term, immediate things that can be done to try and support Eskom through this, um, maybe getting uh, more uh, private sector capacity up quicker than first envisaged, uh, and the, the DSM programs, etc. And then looking at having more structural conversation about what are the priorities for this energy sector. And then obviously, you know, if there can be any support from the private sector to Eskom in dealing with what is really the, the real crisis of the moment, and that's, our, that's both the issue of the delayed projects at Madupi, Kusile and Angula, as well as the uh, issue of the electricity uh, availability factor, which has fallen, you know, from around 90% uh, earlier in, at the turn of the century to currently, or last year, around 75%. And that's really the problem. When something like Majuba goes down, and you've got so much plant unavailable and unplanned outages, plus a lot of maintenance that needs to be going ahead. That's why th we can't sustain uh, the lights or keep the lights on during periods where demand is really not very high at all. We are we really at 2007 levels, so we haven't really grown really our demand, but we've got this really, this plant, this plant is in midlife, so you, you, you're having to do a lot of maintenance, but we're also having to run it harder because of the tight system. So it's in this vicious circle at the moment. So those are the sort of discussions that the Planning Commission um, was looking to maybe try to facilitate over the next few months. If there's no movement on some of these actions and interventions, what is the prognosis for the electricity sector in the coming months? I think the outlook will be very much as it is, uh, because we know that although um, 
Badupi should come up with its first unit uh, to, to just around Christmas time this year. That's going to take another, say, six months to ramp up to sort of steady state. And then we really don't have visibility now from Eskom as to the, the, f the subsequent units, both at Madupi and Kusile, how those are going to come on. Are they going to come on uh, in the initial phase that was going to be like one, one every year or actually shorter than that, nine-month cycles? That doesn't look very likely. In fact, I think it was initially six-month cycles. That's uh, hardly uh, questionable. Um, or is it going to be as bad as some are suggesting that the second Madupi unit might take sort of a two and a half or a year or, or more um, to come uh, to be introduced, which means that we're going to be tight for much longer than we initially thought. So unless we can find some of these uh, solutions around demand side management, bringing in sort of near term uh, generation from the private sector, you know, it's really the prognosis until maybe even 2020 is going to be very similar. Uh, the, the other, the, uh, the big ch thing that could change the dynamic is if Eskom can really, through its maintenance efforts, and there seems to be a commitment to keeping, uh, uh, going, pushing ahead with its maintenance efforts in a very rigid and determined way, which uh, I think was described as bold and brave because, you know, every time you take down units um, and you have to have them out for quite long and there's a, a catastrophe like we see at Majuba, then we really are at, at risk of load shedding. But if, if we can push ahead with this maintenance, and then uh, you know, get this electricity, the availability factor up to levels above 80%. I think that will help, but uh, that's not you know uh, that's not on the horizon in the short term, and I think the prognosis for the rest of the summer is going to be difficult, and then we'll have to see where where demand is. Generally, we get through the winter periods better than summer because of the nature of the, um, the way we do our maintenance. We do it mostly in summer; it's all loaded into that period. And, uh, you, and also the peaks haven't been as high as they were a few years back. So I think, uh, you know, the, but, but, but really looking at it, there's, there's not much chance of the prognosis getting better in, in the next months or year uh, and, unless we take some of these more um, assertive actions around DSM and introducing other supply side remedies from the private sector. It has also emerged that government is poised to move ahead with some of its important procurement programs. Yes, we know about the renewable program that's been successful and I think widely you know, appreciated by the, the developers as well as the international community has, has held up the renewable program, RPP program, as, as a success. Now that's, going, that's still moving ahead. We're in the round three phase. That has been delayed, as I mentioned earlier, around the connection risks. Um, and the fact that, uh, that a lot of these projects are getting more and more difficult for Eskom to connect to the grid. Uh, so that has delayed the round three uh, financial close. We should be hearing the preferred bidders for round four towards the end of November. But again, there might be a knock-on effect because round three has been delayed by so many months. Whether that's going to have a knock-on effect on round four is not clear. But the idea is to continue with that, those programs. We need clarity urgently on the uh, integrated resource plan and the updated version of that. You know, there's been a lot of focus on the RP lately because um, the, the plan that's being worked with, with government is, well, correctly so, there is, only, there is the only RP um, 2010, which uh, is very outdated, and the update is not a policy, so there is only one plan, but it does distort the whole uh, situation because we know the demand outlook is far different for, from what it looked like in the RP 2010. And we know that the supply side options and the prices associated with some of the technologies are quite different from what they were in that version. So we need that update uh, as urgently as possible to give some certainty as to how South Africa is uh, going to tackle uh, the uh, generation side of things, which is crucial. And you know, it also uh, you know it, it comes at a time when there's all this attention being paid to nuclear, which makes sense if you're only looking at it through the prism. <laughs> Uh, of the RP 2010 because the idea is to introduce 9,600 megawatts of nuclear as soon as possible. But that uh, is based on very different assumptions from what we're currently re living through. So while I think that nuclear emphasis will probably continue, there needs to be some certainty around the, the other elements. And the other two crucial elements that seem to be coming to the fore, well, there are three, but that, that are coming to some sort of fruition are the coal base load uh, tender for th uh, 2,500 megawatts. And we should start seeing the tender documents coming out fairly soon. 
and then there's the cogeneration uh, tender for 800 megawatts. That's also crucial to try and get the, the, that sector going. That's a, a real low-hanging fruit because those can generally be brought in quite quickly and uh, they can really offer some relief to Eskom when the system is tight. So I think that we talk, they're talking about early next year for that tender to be released. And then once we've got finality around the gas utilization master plan, I think we'll start seeing some movement on the tender for introducing more gas into the, the energy mix. So these are important movements and uh, there seems to be confirmation again by the finance minister in his, in his mini budget saying that we're going to be moving ahead with those RPP programs and also out of the RPP office to say that we are going to be moving ahead. So that is uh, something of a light at the end of the tunnel, but the tunnel is very dark and deep and long, and we need to also have these other conversations to try to get ourselves out of the situation. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis.